I was lucky enough to, to start in the music business when not too many people knew what it was. And so there weren't a lot of people going after the same job as I was. Uh, I got my job by writing a letter and it just happened to be on the top of the pile at the time the EMI was looking for someone to come and work at Abbey Road and I got the gig. I think it's pretty much the same these days. It, even though there are a lot more people going for the job, if you keep your letter or whatever on the top of the pile, that's the first one they pick up, look at, and you're the one that will get the phone call. So it's just keep writing, writing, writing. I've been asked what my favorite piece of studio gear is. Uh, that's tough. The, the most important part for me is, is always the monitors, because if you don't have good monitors, you don't know what you're listening to, and you, you can't really do anything if you don't know what, what you're listening to. I, so I suppose that's my favorite, just, just because it, it's the most important. And to hear something that you're putting together and hear it come to life over great speakers, there's nothing better than that. What is my favorite innovation and my least favorite innovation over the years? Uh, it's fairly easy to answer. It, it, it's Pro Tools. It, it's digital recording. They're, they're, as far as favorite, there are so many things that you can do with digital that you can't do with analog. I still prefer the sound of analog, but there are a lot of things that you can't do with that. Uh, my least favorite, once again, would be Pro Tools. And that's because more humankind than uh, actually is a piece of gear. It's that it enables people just to keep on recording and recording and recording, never having to make up their minds, never having to make a decision about, yes, that's it, or no, that's not it. They just keep on going and going. And that to me is just sheer stupidity. And it's one of the worst things that's happened to the recording industry. What are the most common mistakes that engineers make today? And well, I haven't worked with too many other engineers as I engineer my own uh, projects. But my understanding is that uh, one of the things is not making decisions. Uh, and number two is not getting it in the studio first. Uh, the sound for me always needs to start in the studio. If you want to get a great drum sound, you've got to get a really good to great drum sound in the studio to start with. Same with guitar, same with bass, same with strings, all of it. It starts in the studio and you it doesn't matter how many plugins you've got, they're not gonna make something that doesn't sound good to start with great. I often say that uh, mistakes are good or can be good. Uh, I have experienced creating my own mistakes which have been kept. Uh, one story I tell all the time is about Glass Onion on the White Al Beatles White Album and how I erased some of Ringo's drums. Uh, another experience, not mine, of, of a mistake that John Lennon happened to like was on Revolution, the album version, not the single version, where one of the engineers at uh, Abbey Road at the time was doing an edit on the mix and he did it in the wrong place and so at about 324 I think it is uh, there is an additional bass drum beat that was never actually re really recorded in there that just throws it off tempo or off beat and uh, although the the engineer was panicking when he did it uh, John heard it loved it and it stayed As far as the future of recording, uh, whether I hold much hope for the quality of recording, both, I suppose, both musically and sonically, uh, I totally believe in talent. I think talent will win out. I think it always has won out. And once people, general record buying public, start to be introduced to good music again, uh, I think at that point they're going to demand, start demanding more, 
more quality, audio quality. They'll, they'll start to miss certain things that they don't get at the moment through brick walling and through MP3s. And we'll start to get back to the way it was more during the, the 60s, the 70s, early 80s, when uh, they were totally into getting the best sounding records possible and just sat down and enjoyed listening, which is something that's gone away, but I, I have to believe it's going to come back, otherwise I might as well give up. Uh, so yeah, I hold high hopes both musically and sonically for the future. Mm -hmm.